thrive in this kind of environment. They've got all this broad leaves. Sheep don't really like uh, grass as well as they do a broad leaf. And that's what makes it so nice when sheep and cattle together, is the sheep will go after the weeds and the cattle will go after the grass. And over time, sheep will make your cattle pasture better. And that's because they're taking out, out all, they're taking out all those. There's a multiple rose bush. Here's a small autumn olive that's been chopped off. And you chop them off, they get mad. They come back with lots of sprouts. Well, guess what? That's really good sheep feed. Yeah, sheep eat that. love that. They absolutely love these because they're <laughs> yeah, there's there's thorns on there. Those darn things will get you. Yeah, you see all these all that green stuff coming on? Every one of those is you can grow lamb with that. Baby lambs will come along and eat those. They'll eat that. Of course, they get leaves on. They got little bitty mouths. And even this little buck brush right here. Cattle aren't going to kill that, but sheep will put pressure on that. Yes. And so as you start to put more sheep manure down, and see, the thing about sheep is they move a lot. And so you're getting this treading action of their feet. And the steeper the, the, steeper the terrain on your farm, the better suited it is for sheep. Mm -hmm. I, think, That's, I think Sue could do this. <laughs> there you go. Get that dog. Get that dog up there. Yeah. Get the dog. Just laugh. You know that. Get that. Get that dog up there. Get her trained. If you could get your sheep trained to one poly wire, that's what we've got ours trained to. Wow. Just run a poly wire and put your sheep. Another thing about I'm sheep. Sure the dog would stay within that poly oh, wire. Though. Ours does. Um, the She's thing about sheep artist. is, in the winter time, you don't need to give them any water. Y'all hear that? No water for sheep. I remember you saying that. As yeah. long as they're grazing stockpile. So there's green out here. They can get just enough juice, moisture out of that green that they won't even drink water in the winter time. In the winter. But now summer and spring and fall, you've got to, yeah. of course, provide water for them. But there are smaller animals. So the steeper the terrain, the better suited they are. In New Zealand, there's 43 million sheep. <coughs> I think there's only like six million people. <laughs> the reason New Zealand has a lot of sheep, there are trains like this. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of steep ground, and yeah. so there's more sheep, a lot more sheep than there are cattle. Um, to me, I'm looking at this as like, man, sheep would do so good in this because it's so darn steep. Now, um, how did you get the sheep trained to one wire? Yeah, so you start out with three. You put three wires, and when you get them accustomed to staying in three wires, you can go down to two. And you start staying in two, then you go down to one. But you do need a rifle. <laughs> you got to shoot the ones that don't stay in. <laughs> and eat them. Just eat, eat the ones that don't stay in. And over time, they're like, well, Joe got shot last week. I think I'm going to stay in the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Incentive. <laughs> yep, incentive. Yeah, that's good. I got a 22 shell. I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> <laughs> but the but, thing, too, is having Joe. a hot. Yeah, it needs to be 8,000 volts. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you look at this brown <laughs> stuff right there, that he brush hog, that's going to come back. Oh, yeah. And you're never going to control it with a brush hog. Nope. No. You've got to put the animals in it. And so when it tries to grow back, the photosynthesis, there's a darn sheep out there chewing on it. Well, they finally exhaust the root reserves of that plant. Kills it. Kills it. Kills it. And you can't do that with a brush hog. No. This is already coming back. That's Brian comes back on there. Oh, it, will, it will not come back with sheep. Sheep will kill that in two years. Really? They'll kill that bush dead on the hand. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. We got lots of. We don't have any multifur rose bushes left on our sheep farm. They're gone. They're gone. And we had ridges that were solid multifur rose bush. And that. How many years? Two? You said two? No, it took probably three to four okay. years. Okay. But the ones that are left, I kind of like them out there. Uh, I want a few. And that's because it gives them sheep feed. What is that? Is it moving? Is that a coyote? Is that black, the black, big black? No, no, no. Between that bale and us, there's something there. I Up on the hill, look a lighter color. Oh, is that a coyote? Oh. I think I see it moving. Or is it? A little calf, maybe. It's a there. small. I see it. I see it. I don't have... Binoculars. Binoculars. But I thought I saw it moving. It is moving. Maybe it's Groundhog a calf. Or a grass calf. I don't know, it's a coyote. So Sorry. Greg. Yes. Um, we have an idea. We have a, she had a question about breed of sheep. About what? So, breed of so sheep. His wife would like Catawban. Yeah. 
Catan? Catan. Catan, oh, sorry. Catan. 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 Catan's are very cheap. They, uh, the Catan was built by using St. Croix. Mm -hmm. St. Croix is what gave Catan the parasite resistance. So there's St. Croix, um, Wiltshire Horn was one of them, then there was one other breed, I forgot. They used three breeds to build the Katahdin with. Oh. So yeah, I mean, Katahdins are the most popular hair sheep breed there is in the United States. They very easily here. Yeah, so. and, and they, they're pretty good meat. They got pretty good meat on them. A little bit more bigger carcass than a pure St. Croix does. We run St. Croix because they are the most parasite resistant breed there is okay. available in the United States. Mm. Um, but they don't have quite as big a carcass as a Katahdin does. So, yeah, I think Katahdins would work great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just remember this. The